you may be surprised to learn that there's two versions of WordPress. In this video, I'll explain what each one is and tell you which one we'll use to build a website in this course. Let's start with WordPress.com. Here's the website for WordPress.com. You know when you register for a new social network, it usually takes you through this guided setup process. Uh, you'll have to follow some friends, you'll have to complete your profile, etc. So WordPress.com is kind of like that, as you're about to see. So to start creating a website, I'll click the Get Started button, and it'll guide me through the basic steps to set up my website. I'll do things like pick a name for my site, choose a category, and list a goal for my site. Then I'll pick a domain name, which is usually just a subdomain of WordPress.com. If you want your own domain, you're going to have to upgrade to a premium tier. As you can see, this is the pricing for uh, those tiers. Once I finish setting this baby up, I'll log into my account, which takes me to my dashboard or the reader feed, which is kind of like your WordPress news feed. In it, you can like, share, and comment on other WordPress blogs you're following. It's kind of similar to Facebook and other social networks in sense. Um, okay, so then if I click my site, it'll take me to the dashboard where I can manage my site. At the top, it'll show me my site stats, such as visitors, referrals, stuff like that. Next, you'll see a menu item for managing my site pages and managing my blog posts. Let's check out the customize feature below that, though. The customizer is a basic front end styler for your site. You can make very basic changes like changing text colors and or the fonts you're using. You can also get some of the customization limitations removed if you upgrade your plan, but it still won't be worth it because you want to make beautiful professional WordPress websites, right? And Let's be honest, Phil, whose website this is, is paying $29 a month for a premium version, yet his site does not look premium. Sorry, Phil. <laughs> Let's compare this to WordPress.org. So you don't manage WordPress.org sites by visiting WordPress.org. WordPress.org is more of a community resource for WordPress designers and developers as opposed to an online website builder app like WordPress.com or Squarespace. In order to get started with WordPress.org, you need to purchase hosting from somewhere like GoDaddy or Bluehost. I prefer GoDaddy because it's been good to me in the past and it's super affordable. I'll show you step-by-step -step how to do this a bit later, but here's a high-level overview of how you get into WordPress.org. First, you'd go to GoDaddy, um, and then I'd, meet, I'd click the WordPress um, item in the upper, the third in on the menu item, uh, on the menu up top. And then I'd find the managed hosting, WordPress hosting services, and purchase that. So I'd click there. And as you can see, it's like $3.99 um, if you pay annually per month, or it's $7.90, or it's $6.99, I believe, if you pay um, per month on, an, uh, on a no contract basis. Next, I'll log into my GoDaddy account and go to the hosting section to find my managed WordPress hosting. Uh, it looks like the screen in, in, uh, that I'm showing you right now. So by clicking on the WP admin button, I'm taken back to the back end of WordPress of my WordPress.org site, which looks like this. And here's the front end of my fictitious bakery website that I'm creating for the purpose of this course. Plus, I've always wanted to create a bakery website for some reason. So it looks a lot better than Phil's, right? I, I'll, I'll just assume you agree. <laughs> so too long, don't read. WordPress.org is software that your hosting provider installs. And WordPress.com is a web app that lives on someone else's property. Uh, WordPress.com. <laughs> so of course, though, as with anything in life, there are pros and cons to each of these. Let's chat about the pros and cons of WordPress.com first. Pros. Easy to set up. As you can see, they hold your hand throughout the process. It's easy to design because you can only change fonts and some colors and maybe some background images, and that's really the extent of its design capabilities. Third, it's free, me um, so it's kind of a pro, but it's also kind of a con. You have to pay for upgrades. That sucks. You just don't get a lot of bang for your buck with WordPress.com. There's limited functionality and limited design options. Oh, and you have to pay to use your domain name. So stupid. All right, WordPress.org, pros and cons. It's totally and completely free. There's unlimited features and functionality. It has beautiful designs. You can create anything in WordPress. You own your own site. 
the installation process is super simple. Uh, in fact, you don't even have to do anything because GoDaddy or whatever web host you're using does it for you. The cons, there's a hosting fee, which is, like I said, minimal, between $3.99 and $6.99 per month. Um, the other thing that sucks is that you have increased responsibility. So you have to update your site. If something happens, you have to figure out, do you need GoDaddy or do you need uh, theme support? Who do you need to get help from? By now, you probably already know which one we're going to be using in this course because I've been pretty obvious about it. But in case you didn't catch on, the winner is dun, 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 WordPress.org. <laughs> So for this course, we're going to be using WordPress.org. It's cheaper, it has a lot more functionality, and it has infinitely more themes, and it's a hell of a lot more customizable, making it way more scalable. In short, WordPress is WordPress.com is for a simple blog like Phil's, whereas WordPress.org is for a company website. Whew. Finally, we're on to the last part of this section. If you already have a project to work on, feel free to skip ahead to the next lesson, but consider revisiting this one later when it comes time to find your next client. Shall we?